Today, we set sail on an adventure to uncover the mystery of the Mary Celeste, a ghost ship that has perplexed and baffled sailors and historians alike for over a century. Our journey takes us back to the year 1872, when the Mary Celeste was discovered in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, adrift off the coast of Portugal. But here's the strange part. The ship was completely empty. Its crew, nowhere to be found. Picture this, a ship without a crew, sailing aimlessly across the vast and treacherous ocean. There were another six months worth of food and water supplies. The cargo was still intact, the sails were still set, and the ship was in good condition, yet there was no sign of the captain, his family, or the crew. Strangely, the captain's navigational equipment was missing. The final entry in the captain's logbook was dated 8 a.m., on the 25th of November 1872. The final entry also revealed that they were within sighting distance of Santa Maria Island. The 10 people missing on the ship were the captain, Benjamin Briggs, his wife, Sarah, and their daughter, Sophia. In addition to the Briggs family, the Mary Celeste was carrying a crew of seven men, including a first mate, a second mate, a cook, and four sailors. What could have happened to them? Let's weigh the evidence, shall we? When the ship was discovered, there were no signs of a fire, struggle, or violence on board, which suggests that the crew did not put up a fight. There were three and a half feet of water in the ship's under deck, which could be explained by the unlocked front and back hatch. Furthermore, the ship's compass was found to be damaged, which could indicate that the crew was attempting to navigate in bad weather or in the dark. If the ship was caught in a storm or encountered a mechanical failure, it's possible that the crew became disoriented and lost their way. It was reported that there was a stain that appeared to be blood on the captain's sword. Some have suggested that this could be evidence of foul play. The law of salvage is a legal principle that governs the recovery of property that has been abandoned at sea. In essence, the law states that whoever recovers a vessel or its cargo that has been lost or abandoned at sea is entitled to a salvage award, which is typically a percentage of the value of the property that has been salvaged. In the case of the Mary Celeste, the ship was salvaged by a crew led by a man named David Morehouse. Morehouse was the captain of a ship called the De Grazia, which encountered the Mary Celeste adrift in the Atlantic Ocean on December 4, 1872, about 600 miles east of the Azores. When Morehouse and his crew boarded the Mary Celeste, they found the ship abandoned, with no sign of the crew or the captain's family. Morehouse and his crew sailed the Mary Celeste to the port of Gibraltar, where they planned to claim a salvage award for the value of the ship and its cargo. This would be a fatal mistake they'll regret, as instead of getting the promised reward, according to the law of salvage, the crew were accused of harming the ten missing members of the Mary Celeste in order to claim salvage. In the end, the crew was rewarded $8,000, or $160,000 in today's money, about one-third of the value of the ship and its cargo. This was below the rate of typical payout at the time. Despite being acquitted, rumors persisted, and David Morehouse and his team did not have an easy time. While David Morehouse was putting up with whispers of folks who suspected their involvement, other theories began piling up. It's been suggested that the captain and his family may have put up a fight and injured some of the crew in the process. The red stain may indicate pirates' involvement. Piracy was rampant in the Atlantic Ocean during the late 1800s, and many ships fell victim to marauding pirates. It's possible that the Mary Celeste was targeted by pirates, who overpowered the crew and stole the ship's cargo. One of the key pieces of evidence that supports this theory is the missing personal belongings of the crew. If the crew had abandoned the ship willingly, it seems unlikely that they would have left their personal effects behind. It's possible that the pirates seized the belongings as well as the lifeboat, leaving the crew with no means of escape. Additionally, there are reports of suspicious boat sightings nearby at the time the Mary Celeste was discovered. Some witnesses have reported seeing the ship with unusual rigging, suggesting it may be a pirate ship. It is also worth noting that there was no sign of fighting or violence on Mary Celeste. This suggests that her crew may have been caught off guard by pirates. The lack of damage to the ship may also indicate that the pirates did not intend to sink it, but intended to confiscate it for their own purposes. 
However, some historians and researchers point out that there are no concrete records of piracy in the area where the Mary Celeste was found. The presence of wine, still in the cellar, also helps disprove this theory. Had pirates been there, they would not have left such valuable cargo on board. The crew's personal belongings can also be explained by other factors such as natural disasters or mechanical failures. Perhaps, it got swept up by the raging storm. It's also worth noting that some historians and researchers have dismissed the red stain on the captain's sword as being rust or some other substance rather than blood. Another theory that has received much attention over the years is that the lost sail may have played a role in the fate of the ship and its crew. Some historians and researchers point out that, when Mary Celeste was found adrift in the Atlantic Ocean, one of her sails was missing. The sail in question was the foresail mainsail, the large and important sail used to propel the ship forward. Some speculate that this lack of sails played a role in the mystery of the ship's abandonment. A strong gust of wind may have ripped off the ship's sails, causing the crew to panic and abandon the ship. This could explain why the ship was relatively undamaged and showed no signs of struggle or violence. Another possibility is that the missing sail was intentionally removed by the crew for repairs, or was removed because it was damaged in some way. This would have caused the ship to leave without the necessary propulsion to move forward, which would have been a serious problem for the crew. In this scenario, the crew may have abandoned ship in search of assistance or spare sails, but were lost at sea in the process. One theory we haven't explored yet is the possible involvement of Mother Nature. Seaquake. Seaquakes are a type of undersea earthquake that can cause strong waves and currents, that can damage or capsize ships. This theory suggests that the crew of the Mary Celeste may have felt the ship shake from the earthquake and thought the ship was in danger of sinking. As a result, they may have abandoned the ship in lifeboats, hoping to gain safety before it sank. However, there are some problems with this theory. First, sea quakes are extremely rare, especially in the area where Mary Celeste was found. Second, the ship was found in good condition with no signs of damage or flooding consistent with the sea quake. The sea quake theory is an intriguing idea, but the evidence for it is scant and he is just one of many possible explanations that could explain the mystery of Mary Celeste. The most likely theory, however, involves what material the wine barrels are made of. There are two types of wine barrels on board. The first type was made with red oak, and the other type was made with white oak. Red oak barrels are more porous, and it's possible that the content of the red wine barrels may have seeped out, filling the underdeck with toxic fume. When enough of those fumes built up, it would have caused an explosion large enough to scare everyone on board. If they thought that there was an explosion, they would seek to escape. We know one lifeboat was missing. Would they have been stupid enough to escape via a lifeboat in the middle of the sea? Possibly. And they have good reasons to. Modern research suggests that the captain's navigational instrument may have been off, and he may have thought Mary Celeste was closer to Santa Maria Island when they were actually twice the distance away. If the ship was sinking, their best bet could be to try to find shelter on Santa Maria Island until help arrived. If he had mistakenly thought the ship was close to Santa Maria, the captain may have made the decision to row a boat there. And of course, tragically realized that it was a wrong choice and the island was not within rowing distance. Another angle to look at this theory considered the rope that was found trailing behind the ship. Some believe that the 10 missing Mary Celeste crew had tied a lifeboat to Mary Celeste. Something may have gone wrong with Mary Celeste and they needed to leave, but being out in the middle of the sea in a small lifeboat was not a good idea, so they made do with what they had, by tying the lifeboat to Mary Celeste until it was safe to board again. When the rope got separated from Mary Celeste, they could only watch on in horror as they were unable to catch up to her despite rowing with all their might. So what could have gone wrong on Mary Celeste for the crew to engage the lifeboat? Some speculate that it could have been an explosion, due to wine barrel leakage, or water that leaked into the ship. The ship was found with water in its hull, although not nearly enough to sink the ship. The explosion theory was also under scrutiny because no signs of an explosion took place. That theory was thrown out of the water. 
until modern scientists did an experiment and found out that explosions like that could leave no trace. This theory was further strengthened when reports of ships exploding in similar circumstances at the time were found. All these explosions did not leave a trace but at the moment that they occurred, could have led the crew and captain to assume the boat was about to sink. Still, we can't figure out why the captain didn't take his logbook with him when he left. If he thought the boat was slowly sinking due to an explosion, shouldn't he have time to get his logbook? Or is it possible that he just forgot to do so? Rumors of what may have happened on Mary Celeste were widespread, and no one wanted to touch a ship where a lovely family and their crew may have been brutally murdered. Mary Celeste was sold at a loss. Seven years after the ship was found missing its crew, in 1979, the ship was docked at St. Helena Bay. They wanted to seek some urgent medical care for the ship's new captain, who unfortunately didn't make it. In total, Mary Celeste had seen three of its captains tragic end at sea. It made people believe that the ship was cursed. What happened to Mary Celeste, in the end, was not much better than the captain she once welcomed on board. A couple of years later, another captain, Captain John Parker, conspired to rack the ship near Haiti. He filled the ship with cargo that wasn't worth much and insured the ship for $30,000, which is about $850,000 if converted to today's money. The insurance company investigated the crash and discovered the plot. Captain Parker and his accomplices were charged with insurance fraud. And the crime of willingly casting away a ship, a crime was considered so horrendous, it deserves a hanging in those days. Captain Parker was set free. But he died just three months later. Broke and alone. Nobody wanted to associate themselves with a con man. His reputation did not survive the trial even though he did. Other accomplices either went insane or unlived themselves. It truly was a tragic end to everyone involved with Mary Celeste. Today, she lies at the bottom of the sea near Haiti, unable to curse any more captains. Thank you for making it to the end.